Thank you. Everybody, please have a seat. We get, we've got some work to do here. This is not all fun and games. Welcome to the White House, everybody. Uh, today, we celebrate extraordinary Americans who have lifted our spirits, strengthened our union, pushed us towards progress. I always love doing this event, but uh, this is a particularly impressive class. <laughs> We've got innovators and artists, public servants, rabble-rousers, <laughs> athletes, renowned character actors, like the guy from Space Jam. <laughs> We, <laughs> we pay tribute to those distinguished individuals with our nation's highest civilian honor, the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Now, let me tell you a little bit about each of them. Uh, first, we came close to missing out on a Bill and Melinda Gates incredible partnership because apparently Bill's opening line was, do you want to go out two weeks from this coming Saturday? <laughs> I mean, he's good with computers, but, you know. Fortunately, Melinda believes in second chances, and the world is better for it. Uh, for two decades, the Gates Foundation has worked to provide life-saving medical care to millions, boosting clean water supplies, improving education for our children, rallying aggressive international action on climate change, cutting childhood mortality in half. The list could go on. Uh, these two have donated more money to charitable causes than anyone ever. Many years ago, Melinda's mom told her an old saying, to know that even one life has breathed easier because you lived, that is success. And by this and just about any other measure, few in human history have been more successful than these two uh, impatient optimists. Frank Geary has never let popular acclaim reverse his impulse to defy convention. I was an outsider from the beginning, he says, so for better or worse, I thrived on it. The child of poor Jewish immigrants, Frank grew up in Los Angeles, and throughout his life, he embraced the spirit of a city defined by an open horizon. He spent his life rethinking shapes and mediums, seemingly the force of gravity itself, the idea of what architecture could be. He decided to upend, constantly repurposing every material available from titanium to paper towel tube. Uh, he's inspiring our next generation through his advocacy for arts education in our schools. Uh, and from the Guggenheim to Bilbao to Chicago's Millennium Park, our hometown, to his home in Santa Monica, uh, which I understand caused some consternation among his neighbors. <laughs> Frank's work teaches us that while buildings may be sturdy and fixed to the ground, like all great art, they can lift our spirits, they can soar and broaden our horizons. When an undergraduate from rural Appalachia first set foot on the National Mall many years ago, she was trying to figure out a way to show that war is not just a victory or a loss, but about individual lives. She considered how the landscape might shape that message, rather than the other way around. The project that Maya Lin designed for her college class earned her a B plus, <laughs> and a permanent place in American history. <laughs> So, all of you B-plus students out there. <laughs> the Vietnam Veterans Memorial has changed the way we think about monuments, but also about how we think about sacrifice and patriotism and ourselves. Maya has given us more than just places for remembering. She has created places for us to make new memories 
Her sculptures, chapels, homes are physical acts of poetry, each reminding us that the most important element in art or architecture is human emotion. Three minutes before Armstrong and Aldrin touched down on the moon, Apollo 11's lunar lander alarms triggered. Red and yellow lights across the board. Our astronauts didn't have much time, but thankfully they had Margaret Hamilton, a young MIT scientist and a working mom in the 60s. Margaret led the team that created the onboard flight software that allowed the Eagle to land safely. And keep in mind that at this time, software engineering wasn't even a field yet. There were no textbooks to follow. So as Margaret says, there was no choice but to be pioneers. Luckily for us, Margaret never stopped pioneering, and she symbolizes that generation of unsung women who helped spend, uh, send humankind into space. Her software architecture echoes in countless technologies today, and her example speaks of the American spirit of discovery that exists in every little girl and little boy who know that somehow to look beyond the heavens is to look deep within ourselves and to figure out just what is possible. If Wright is flight and Edison is light, then Hopper is code. Born in 1906, Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper followed her mother into mathematics, earned her PhD from Yale, and set out on a long and storied career. At age 37, and a full 15 pounds below military guidelines, <laughs> the gutsy and colorful Grace joined the Navy and was sent to work on one of the first computers, Harvard's Mark I. She saw beyond the boundaries of the possible and invented the first compiler, which allowed programs to be written in regular language and then translated for computers to understand. While the women who pioneered software were often overlooked, the most prestigious award for young computer scientists now bear her name. From cell phones to cyber command, we can thank Grace Hopper for opening programming to millions more people, helping to usher in the information age and profoundly shaping our digital world. Sp speaking of really smart people, <laughs> in the summer of 1950, a young University of Chicago physicist found himself at Los Alamos National Laboratory. Dick Garwin was there, he said, because Chicago paid its faculty for nine months, but his family ate for 12. <laughs> So by the next summer, Dick had helped create the hydrogen bomb. And for the rest of his life, he dedicated himself to reducing the threat of nuclear war. Dick's not only an architect of the atomic age, ever since he was a Cleveland kid tinkering with his father's movie projectors, he's never met a problem he didn't want to solve. Reconnaissance satellites, the MRI, GPS technology, the touch screen, all bear his fingerprints. He even patented a muscle washer for shellfish, which that I haven't used. <laughs> the other stuff I have. <laughs> Where is he? Okay. Dick has advised nearly every president since Eisenhower, often rather bluntly. Enrico Fermi, also a pretty smart guy, is said to have called Dick the only true genius he ever met. Uh, I, I do want to see this muscle washer. <laughs> Along with these scientists, artists, and thinkers, we also honor those who have shaped our culture from the stage and the screen. In her long and extraordinary career, Cicely Tyson has not only exceeded as an actor, she has shaped the whole course of history. Cicely was never the likeliest of Hollywood stars. The daughter of immigrants from the West Indies, she was raised by a hardworking and religious mother who cleaned houses and forbade her children to attend the movies. But once she got her education and broke into the business, Cicely made a conscious decision not just to say lines but to speak out. I would not accept roles, she said, unless they projected us, particularly women, in a realistic light and dealt with us as human beings. And from Sounder to the trip to Bountiful, to the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, Cicely's convictions and grace have helped for us to see the dignity of every single beautiful member of the American family. And she's just gorgeous. 
And uh, yes, she is. In 1973, a critic wrote of Robert De Niro, this kid doesn't just act, he takes off into the vapors. And it was true, his characters are iconic. The Sicilian father turned New York mobster, a mobster who runs a casino, a mobster who needs therapy, <laughs> a father-in-law who's scarier than a mobster, <laughs> Al Capone, a mobster, Robert combines dramatic precision and, it turns out, comedic timing with his signature eye for detail. And while the name De Niro is synonymous with tough guy, his true gift is the sensitivity that he brings to each role. This son of New York artist didn't stop at becoming one of the world's great actors. He's also a director, a philanthropist, co-founder of the Tribeca Film Festival. Of his tireless preparation, from learning the saxophone to remaking his body, he once said, I feel I have to earn the right to play a part. And the result is honest and authentic art that reveals who we really are. In 1976, Lorne Michaels implored the Beatles to reunite on his brand new show. In exchange, he offered them $3,000. And then he told them they could share it equally, or they could give Ringo a smaller cut. <laughs> Which was early proof that Lorne Michaels has a good sense of humor. <laughs> On Saturday Night Live, he's created a world where a band of no-names become comedy's biggest stars, where our friends the Coneheads and cheerleaders and land sharks and basement deadbeats and motivational speakers and an unfrozen caveman lawyer show up and Tom Hanks is on Black Jeopardy. <laughs> After four decades, even in this fractured media culture that we've got, SNL remains appointment viewing, a mainland into not just our counterculture, but our culture. Still a challenge to the powerful, uh, especially uh, folks like me. Um, and yet, even after all these years, Lorne jokes that his tombstone should bear just a single word that's often found in the show's reviews, uneven. <laughs> As a current US senator would say, doggone it, Lorne. That's why people like you. <laughs> hey, he's produced a, he produced a senator, too. It's uh, pretty impressive. Ellen DeGeneres has a way of making you laugh about something rather than at someone. Except when I danced on her show. She laughed at me. <laughs> but that's OK. Uh, it's easy to forget now. When we've come so far, we're now marriage is equal under the law. Just how much courage was required for Ellen to come out on the most public of stages almost 20 years ago. Just how important it was, not just to the LGBT community, but for all of us, to see somebody so full of kindness and light, somebody we liked so much, somebody who could be our neighbor or our colleague or our sister, challenge our own assumptions. Remind us that we have more in common than we realize. Push our country in the direction of justice. What an incredible burden that was to bear, to risk your career like that. People don't do that very often. And then to have the hopes of millions on your shoulders. But it's like Ellen says, uh, we all want a tortilla chip that can support the weight of guacamole. <laughs> Which really makes no sense to me but I thought would break the mood, because I, I was getting kind of choked up. <laughs> and she did pay a price. We don't remember this. I hadn't remembered it. She did, for 
a pretty long stretch of time, uh, even in Hollywood. And yet, today, every day, in every way, uh, Ellen counters what too often divides us with the countless things that bind us together, inspires us to be better, one joke, one dance at a time. When the candidate wins his race in the iconic 1972 film of the same name, which continues, by the way, for those of you who haven't seen it, and many of you are too young to be perhaps the best movie about what politics is actually like ever, uh, he famously asks his campaign manager the reflective and revealing question, what do we do now? And like the man he played in that movie, Robert Redford has figured it out and applied his talent and charm to achieve success. We admire Bob not just for his remarkable acting, but for having figured out what to do next. He created a platform for independent filmmakers with the Sundance Institute. He has supported our national parks and our national resources as one of the foremost conservationists of our generation. He's given his unmatched charisma to unforgettable characters like Roy Hobbs, Nathan Muir, and of course the Sundance Kid, entertaining us for more than half a century. As an actor, director, producer, and as an advocate, he has not stopped. And apparently drives so fast that he had breakfast in Napa and dinner in Salt Lake. <laughs> uh, at 80 years young, uh, Robert Redford has no plans to slow down. According to a recent headline, the movie Sully was the last straw. We should never travel with Tom Hanks. <laughs> I mean, you think about it. You got pirates, plane crashes, you get marooned in airport purgatory, <laughs> volcanoes. Something happens with Tom Hanks. And yet, somehow we can't resist uh, going where he wants to take us. He's been an accidental witness to history, a crusty woman's baseball manager, an every man who fell in love with Meg Ryan three times, <laughs> made it seem natural to have a volleyball as your best friend. <laughs> From a Philadelphia courtroom to Normandy's beachheads to the dark side of the moon, he has introduced us to America's unassuming heroes. Tom says he just saw ordinary guys who did the right thing at the right time. Well, it takes one to know one. And America's dad has stood up to cancer with his beloved wife, Rita. He's championed our veterans, supported space exploration. And the truth is, Tom has always saved his best roles for real life. He is a good man, which is the best title you can have. So we've got inter innovators, entertainers, Three more folks who've dedicated themselves to public service. In the early 1960s, thousands of Cuban children fled to America seeking an education they'd never get back home. And one refugee was a 15-year-old named Eduardo Pedro, whose life changed when he enrolled at Miami-Dade College. That decision led to a bachelor's degree, then a master's degree, then a PhD, and then he had a choice. He could go into corporate America or he could give back to his alma mater. And Eduardo made his choice to create more stories just like his. As Miami-Dade's president since 1995, Dr. Pedron has built a dream factory for one of our nation's most diverse student bodies, 165,000 students in all. He is one of the world's preeminent education leaders, thinking out of the box, supporting students throughout their lives, embodying the belief that we're only as great as the doors we open. Eduardo's example is one we can all follow, a champion of those who strive for this same American dream that first drew him to our shores. When Eloise Cobell first filed a lawsuit to recover lands and money for her people, she didn't set out to be a hero. She said, I just wanted to give people, I, I just wanted to give justice to people that didn't have it. And her lifelong quest to address the mismanagement of American Indian lands, resources, trust funds, wasn't about special treatment, but the equal treatment at the heart of the American promise. She fought for almost 15 years across three presidents, 
Seven trials, 10 appearances before a federal appeals court. All the while, she traveled the country some 40 weeks a year telling the story of her people. And in the end, this graduate of a one-room schoolhouse became a MacArthur genius. She's a, she was a proud daughter of Montana's Blackfeet Nation, reached ultimately a historic victory for all Native Americans through sheer force of will and a belief that the truth will win out. Eloise Cobell overcame the longest odds, reminding us that fighting for what is right is always worth it. Now, every journalist in the room, every media critic knows the phrase Newt Minow coined, the vast wasteland. But the two words Newt prefers we remember from his speech to the nation's broadcasters are these, public interest. That's been the heartbeat of his life's work, advocating for residents of public housing, advising a governor and a Supreme Court justice, cementing presidential debates as our national institution, leading the FCC. When Newt helped launch the first communication satellites, making nationwide broadcasts possible, and eventually GPS possible and cell phones possible, he predicted it would be more important than the moon landing. This will launch ideas into space, he said, and ideas last longer than people. As far as I know, he's the only one of today's honorees who was present on my first date with Michelle. <laughs> Imagine our surprise when we saw Newt, one of our bosses that summer, at the movie theater. <laughs> we do the right thing. So he's also been vital to my personal interests. <laughs> and finally, we honor five of the all-time greats in sports and music. The game of baseball has a handful of signature sounds. You hear the crack of the bat. You got the crowd singing in the seventh inning stretch. And you've got the voice of Vince Scully. Most fans listen to a game's broadcast when they can't be at the ballpark. Generations of Dodgers fans brought their radios into the stands because you didn't want to miss one of Vin's stories. Most play-by-play -play announcers partner with an analyst in the booth to chat about the action, then worked alone and talked just with us. Since Jackie Robinson started at second base, then taught us the game and introduced to us to its players, he narrated the improbable years, the impossible heroics, turned contests into conversations. When he heard about this honor, then asked with characteristic humility, are you sure? <laughs> I'm just an old baseball announcer. And we had to inform him that to Americans of all ages, you are a f old friend. In fact, I thought about him doing all these citations, <laughs> which would have been very cool, but <laughs> I thought we shouldn't make him sing, sing for a supper like that. <laughs> Up next. Here's how great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was. 1967, he had spent a year dominating college basketball. The NCAA bans the dunk. <laughs> they didn't say it was about Kareem, but it was about Kareem. <laughs> when a sport changes its rules <laughs> to make it harder just for you, <laughs> you are really good. And and yet, despite the rule change, he was still the sport's most unstoppable force. It's a title he'd hold for more than two decades, winning NBA Finals MVPs a staggering 14 years apart. Bless you. <laughs> and as a surprisingly similar-looking co-pilot, Roger Murdoch once said in the movie Airplane, I mean, we've got some great actors here. <laughs> Space Jam, Airplane. He did it all while dragging Walton and Lanier up and down the court for 48 minutes. 
But the reason we honor Kareem is more than just a pair of goggles and the sky hope. He stood up for his Muslim faith when it wasn't easy and it wasn't popular. He's as comfortable sparring with Bruce Lee as he is advocating on Capitol Hill or writing with extraordinary eloquence about patriotism. Physically, intellectually, spiritually, Kareem is one of a kind, an American who illuminates both our most basic freedoms and our highest aspirations. When he was five years old, Michael Jordan nearly cut off his big toe with an ax. <laughs> Back then, his handles needed a little work. Uh, but think, if things had gone differently, Air Jordans might never have taken flight. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to buy a shoe with like one toe missing. <laughs> we may never have seen him switch hands in midair against the Lakers, or drop 63 in the garden, or gut it out in the flu game, or hit the shot three different times over Georgetown, over Elo, over Russell. We might not have seen him take on Larry Bird in horse or lift up the sport globally along with the dream team. Yet MJ is still more than those moments, more than just the best player on the two greatest teams of all time, <laughs> the dream team and the 1996 Chicago Bulls. <laughs> He's more than just a logo, more than just an internet meme. It's more than just a charitable donor or a business owner committed to diversity. There is a reason you call somebody the Michael Jordan of. <laughs> Michael Jordan of neurosurgery, or the Michael Jordan of rabbis, or <laughs> the Michael Jordan of outrigger canoeing. And they know what you're talking about. Because Michael Jordan is the Michael Jordan of greatness. He is the definition of somebody so good at what they do that everybody recognizes them. That's pretty rare. As a child, Diana Ross loved singing and dancing for family friends, but not for free. <laughs> <laughs> she was smart enough to pass the hat. And later in Detroit's Brewster housing projects, she met Mary Wilson and Florence Ballard. Their neighbor, Smokey Robinson, put them in front of Barry Gordy and the rest was magic, music history. The Supremes earned a permanent place in the American soundtrack. Along with her honey voice, her soulful sensibility, Diana ex exuded glamour and grace and filled stages that helped to shape the sound of Motown. On top of becoming one of the most successful recording artists of all time, raised five kids, somehow found time to earn an Oscar nomination for acting. Today, from the hip hop that samples her, to the young singers who've been inspired by her, to the audiences that still cannot get enough of her, Diana Ross's influence is inescapable as ever. He was sprung from a cage out on <laughs> Highway 9. <laughs> Quiet kid from Jersey, just trying to make sense of the temples of dreams and the mystery that dotted his hometown, pool halls, bars, girls, and cars, altars, and assembly lines. And for decades, Bruce Springsteen has brought us all along on a journey consumed with the bargains between ambition and injustice and pleasure and pain, the simple glories and scattered heartbreak of everyday life in America. To create one of his biggest hits, he once said, I wanted to craft a record that sounded like the last record on earth, the last one you'd ever need to hear, one glorious noise, then the apocalypse. Every restless kid in America was given a story, born to run. He didn't stop there. Once he told us about himself, he told us about everybody else, steel worker in Youngstown, the Vietnam vet and born to run, born in the USA the sick and marginalized on the streets of Philadelphia, the firefighter carrying the weight of a reeling but resilient nation on the rising, the young soldier reckoning with 
devils and dust in Iraq, the communities knocked down by recklessness and greed in the wrecking ball, all of us with our faults and our failings, every color and class and creed, bound together by one defiant, restless train rolling toward the land of hope and dreams. These are all anthems of our America, the reality of who we are and the reverie of who we want to be. The hallmark of a rock and roll band, Bruce Springsteen once said, is that the narrative you tell together is bigger than anyone could have told on your own. And for decades, alongside the big man, little Steven, a Jersey girl named Patty, and all the men and women of the E Street Band, Bruce Springsteen has been carrying the rest of us on his journey, asking us all, what is the work for us to do in our short time here? I am the president, he is the boss. <laughs> and pushing 70, he's still laying down four-hour live sets. If you have not been at them, he is working. <laughs> Fire-breathing rock and roll. So I thought twice about giving him a medal name for freedom because we hope he remains, in his words, a prisoner of rock and roll for years to come. <laughs> so I told you, this is like a really good class. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to give it up for the recipients of the 2016 <laughs> Presidential Medal of Freedom. Now we got to actually give them medals. <laughs> so please be patient. Uh, we are going to have my military aide read the citations. Uh, each one of them will come up and uh, receive the medals, and then uh, we'll wrap up the program. OK? Let's hit it. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. This An iconic basketball player, <laughs> an iconic basketball player who revolutionized the sport with his all-around play and signature skyhook, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a 19-time All-Star, a six-time World Champion, and the leading scorer in NBA history. Adding to his achievements on the court, he also left his mark off of it, advocating for civil rights, cancer research, science education, and social justice. In doing so, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar leaves a towering legacy of compassion, faith and service to others, a legacy based not only on the strength and grace of his athleticism, but on the sharpness of his mind and the size of his heart. Cobell, accepting on behalf of his mother, Eloise C. Cobell, Yellowbird Woman. <clears throat> A member of the Blackfeet Nation, Eloise Cobell spent her life defying the odds and working on behalf of her people. As a young woman, she was told that she wasn't capable of understanding accounting, so she mastered the field and used her expertise to champion a lawsuit whose historic settlement has helped restore tribal homelands to her beloved Blackfeet Nation and many other tribes. Today, her tenacious and unwavering spirit lives on in the thousands of people and hundreds of tribes for whom she fought and in all those she taught to believe that it is never too late to right the wrongs of the past and help shape a better future.
Ellen DeGeneres. In a career spanning three decades, Ellen DeGeneres has lifted our spirits and brought joy to our lives as a stand-up comic, actor, and television star. In every role, she reminds us to be kind to one another and to treat people as each of us wants to be treated. At a pivotal, pivotal moment, her courage and candor helped change the hearts and minds of millions of Americans, accelerating our nation's constant drive toward equality and acceptance for all. Again and again, Ellen DeGeneres has shown us that a single individual can make the world a more fun, more open, more loving place, so long as we just keep swimming. Robert De Niro. <laughs> For over 50 years, Robert De Niro has delivered some of screen's most memorable performances, cementing his place as one of the most gifted actors of his generation. From The Godfather Part II and The Deer Hunter to Midnight Run and Heat, his work is legendary for its range and depth. Relentlessly committed to his craft, De Niro embodies his characters, creating rich, nuanced portraits that reflect the heart of the human experience. Regardless of genre or era, Robert De Niro continues to demonstrate that extraordinary skill that has made him one of America's most revered and influential artists. Richard L. Garwin. One of the most renowned scientific and engineering minds of our time, Dr. Richard Garwin has always answered the call to help solve society's most challenging problems. He has coupled his pioneering work in defense and intelligence technologies with leadership that underscores the urgency for humanity to control the spread of nuclear arms. Through his advice to Republican and Democratic administrations dating to President Eisenhower, his contributions in fundamental research, and his inventions that power technologies that drive our modern world, Richard Garwin has contributed not only to this nation's security and prosperity, but to the quality of life for people all over the world. William H. Gates III and Melinda French Gates. <laughs> Few people have had the profound global impact of Bill and Melinda Gates. Through their work at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they've demonstrated how the most capable and fortunate among us have a responsibility to use their talents and resources to tackle the world's greatest challenges from helping women and girls lift themselves and their families out of poverty to empowering young minds across America. They have transformed countless lives with their generosity and innovation. Bill and Melinda Gates continue to inspire us with their impatient optimism that together we can remake the world as it should be.
Frank Gehry. Never limited by conventional materials, styles, or processes, Frank Gehry's bold and thoughtful structures demonstrate architecture's power to induce, wonder, and revitalize communities. A creative mind from an early age, he began his career by building imaginary homes and cities with scrap material from his grandfather's hardware store. Since then, his work continues to strike a balance between experimentation and functionality, resulting in some of the 20th century's most iconic buildings. From his pioneering use of technology to the dozens of awe-inspiring sites that bear his signature style, to his public service as a citizen artist through his work with Turnaround Arts, Frank Geary has proven himself an exemplar scholar of American innovation. Margaret Hayfield Hamilton. A pioneer in technology, Margaret Hamilton defined new forms of software engineering and helped launch an industry that would forever change human history. Her software architecture led to giant leaps for humankind writing the code that helped America set foot on the moon. She broke barriers in founding her own software businesses, revolutionizing an industry and inspiring countless women to participate in STEM fields. Her love of exploration and innovation are the source code of the American spirit, and her genius has inspired generations to reach for the stars. Thomas J. Hanks. <laughs> Throughout a distinguished film career, Tom Hanks has revealed the character of America as well as his own. Portraying war heroes, an astronaut, a ship captain, a cartoon cowboy, a young man growing up too fast, and dozens of others, he's allowed us to see ourselves not only as we are, but as we aspire to be. On screen and off, Tom Hanks has honored the sacrifices of those who have served our nation, called on us all to think big and to believe, and inspired a new generation of young people to reach for the sky. <laughs> Deborah Murray, accepting on behalf of her great aunt, Grace Murray Hopper. <laughs> As a child who loved disassembling alarm clocks, Rear Admiral Grace Murray Hopper found her calling early. A Vassar alumna with a PhD in mathematics from Yale, Hopper served in the Navy during World War II, becoming one of the first programmers in early computing. Known today as the Queen of Code, Grace Hopper's work helped make the coding language more practical and accessible. She invented the first compiler, or translator, a fundamental element of our now digital world. Amazing Grace was committed to making the language of computer programming more universal. Today, we honor her contributions to computer science and the sense of possibility she inspired in generations of young people. Michael J. Jordan. <laughs> 
powered by a drive to compete that earned him every major award in basketball, including six NBA championships, five most valuable player awards, and two gold medals, Michael Jordan has a name that's become a synonym for excellence. His wagging tongue and high-flying dunks redefined the game, <laughs> making him a global superstar whose impact transcended basketball and shaped our nation's broader culture. From the courts in Wilmington, Chapel Hill, and Chicago, to the owner's suite he occupies today, his life and example have inspired millions of Americans to strive to be like Mike. Maya Y. Lin. <laughs> Boldly challenging our understanding of the world, Maya Lin's designs have brought people of all walks of life together in spirits of remembrance, introspection, and humility. The manipulation of natural terrain and topography within her works inspires us to bridge our differences and recognize the gravity of our collective existence. Her pieces have changed the landscape of our country and influenced the dialogue of our society, never more profoundly than with her tribute to the Americans who fell in Vietnam by cutting a wound into the earth to create a sacred place of healing in our nation's capital. Lauren Michaels. One of the most transformative entertainment figures of our time, Lauren Michaels followed his dreams to New York City, where he created a sketch show that brought satire, wits, and modern comedy to homes around the world. Under his meticulous command as executive producer, Saturday Night Live has entertained audiences across generations, reflecting and shaping critical elements of our cultural, political, and national life. Lauren Michaels' creative legacy stretches into late night television, sitcoms, and the big screen, making us laugh, challenging us to think, and raising the bar for those who follow. As one of his show's signature characters would say, well, isn't that special? <laughs> Newton N. Minow. As a soldier, counsel to the governor of Illinois, chairman of the Federal Communications Commission, and law clerk to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Newton Minow's career has been defined by his devotion to others. Deeply committed to his family, the law, and the American people, his dedication to serving and empowering the public is reflected in his efforts to ensure that broadcast media educates and provides opportunity for all. Challenging the media to better serve their viewers, his staunch commitment to the power of ideas and information has transformed telecommunications and its influential role in our society. <clears throat> Dr. Eduardo J. Padron. As a teenage refugee from Cuba, Eduardo Padron came to the United States to pursue the American dream, and he has spent his life making that dream real for others. 
As president of the community college he once attended, his thoughtful leadership and commitment to education have transformed Miami-Dade College into one of the premier learning institutions in the country, earning him praise around the world. His personal story and lasting professional influence prove that success need not be determined by our background, but by our dedication to others, our passion for creating America that is as inclusive as it is prosperous. Robert Redford. Robert Redford has captivated audiences from both sides of the camera through entertaining motion pictures that often explore vital social, political, and historical themes. His lifelong advocacy on behalf of preserving our environment will prove as an enduring a legacy as his award-winning films as will his pioneering support for independent filmmakers across America. His art and activism continue to shape our nation's cultural heritage, inspiring millions to laugh, cry, think, and change. Diana Ross. <laughs> A daughter of <laughs> A daughter of Detroit, Diana Ross helped create the sound of Motown with her iconic voice. From her groundbreaking work with the Supremes to a solo career that has spanned decades, she has influenced generations of young artists and shaped our, na our nation's musical landscape. In addition to a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award and countless musical accolades, Diana Ross has a distinguished herself as an actor, earning an Oscar nomination and a Golden Globe Award. With over 25 albums, unforgettable hit singles, and live performances that continue to captivate audiences around the world, Diana Ross still reigns supreme. Next up, Vin Scully. <laughs> With a voice that transcended a sport and transformed a profession, Vin Scully narrated America's pastime for generations of fans. Known to millions as the soundtrack of summer, he found, the time, he found time to teach us about life and love while chronicling routine plays and historic heroics. In victory and in defeat, his colorful accounts reverberated through the bleachers, across the airwaves, and into our homes and imaginations. He is an American treasure and a beloved storyteller, and our country's gratitude for Vin Scully is as profound as his love for the game. Bruce F. Springsteen. As a songwriter, a humanitarian, America's rock and roll laureate, and New Jersey's greatest ambassador, Bruce Springsteen is, quite simply, the boss. 
Through stories about ordinary people, from Vietnam veterans to steel workers, his songs capture the pain and the promise of the American experience. With his legendary E Street Band, Bruce Springsteen leaves everything on stage in epic, communal live performances that have rocked audience for decades. With empathy and honesty, he holds up a mirror to who we are, as Americans chasing our dreams, and as human beings trying to do the right thing. There's a place for everyone in Bruce Springsteen's America. Cicely Tyson. <laughs> For 60 years, Cicely Tyson has graced the screen and the stage, enlightening us with her groundbreaking characters and calls to conscious humility and hope. Her achievements as an actor, her devotion to her faith, and her commitment to advancing equality for all Americans, especially women of color, have touched audiences of multiple generations. From the autobiography of Miss Jane Pittman, to Sounder, to The Trip to Bountiful, Cicely Tyson's performances illuminate the character of our people and the extraordinary possibilities of America. Just on a personal note, uh, part of the reason that these events are so special to me is because uh, everybody on this stage has touched me in a very powerful personal way, uh, in ways that uh, they probably couldn't imagine, uh, whether it was having been inspired by a song or a game or a story or a film uh, or a monument uh, or in the case of Newt Menno introducing me to Michelle. <laughs> uh, you know, th th these are folks who uh, have helped make me who I am and think about uh, my presidency. And what also makes it special is this is America. Uh, and it's useful when you think about this incredible collection of people to realize that um, this is what makes us the greatest nation on earth, not because of what we... <laughs> not because... Not because of our differences, but because uh, in our difference we find something common to share. Uh, and what a glorious thing that is. What a great gift that is uh, to America. So uh, I want all of you to enjoy uh, the wonderful reception that will be taking place afterwards. Uh, Michelle and I have to get back to work, unfortunately. <laughs> but I hear the food is pretty good. And I would like all of you to give uh, one big rousing round of applause to our 2016 honorees for the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Give it up.